Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. This video here has been a long time in the making. As we don't accept cars in this kind of shape anymore, and we really don't even do interior details unless they're complimentary or included in a, p a package where we prepare and clean the interior and then protect it. However, my son likes to flip cars. He likes to go to the auction, pick up vehicles, uh, clean them up, fix them up, and sell them. And I like to help him out. So this here is the worst case scenario since we moved into this shop when it comes to just a nightmare of an interior. Dirt, dog hair, stains, you name it, this interior has it. We do not use an extractor here. So I thought this would be a great time to share the process and what we use to not oversaturate the material. When we're talking about seating, we're talking about a material, a thin layer of cloth and material over top of foam padding. When we're talking about rugs and carpeting, a thin layer of fibers over top of, well, it's really any type of material that they use for padding and it all holds moisture. You do not want to oversaturate. So we just treat uh, the stains and the dirt topically. An extractor does make the material look a little bit better quicker, but you got to keep in mind you're forcing a lot of moisture down in below that material into the cushion. Then you're going to spend a lot more time uh, drying it out before you hand it back to the customer or whatever you're going to do with the vehicle. Uh, there can be problems if you put too much moisture into those materials causing mold and mildew and other problems. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is go around, check all of the pockets and empty them and be very careful. You never know what is in the pockets. Could be needles, could be anything dangerous. So make sure you have uh, protective gear, gloves. Uh, if it's really bad in the inside while you're taking out the mats, get that face mask or uh, protection uh, for your lungs on your face right away. Uh, we do want to remove the seats these rugs are absolutely nasty and you can't do them properly with the, the seats bolted to the floor so let's get those bolts out of there 14 millimeter and we can pull the seats pulling the seats guys is another issue you're going to do that at your own risk uh, a lot of the seats are powered with uh, airbags attached so uh, you definitely want to take the positive connection uh, to the battery and disconnect that before you do anything Here's an example of all the connections underneath that seat. You have the seat belt sensor. You also have the, the motor for the power seats and also the airbag sensors as well. With those unplugged, you can pull the seat out. Revealing the nastiness underneath. I will be vacuuming shortly before I even get in and start to clean this, but before I do, I'm going to take forced air and blow all the grit, the loose dirt, and all that, uh, whatever's clinging to the plastics, and we're working from top to bottom on these vehicles, so let's get everything down onto that rug before we vac. Now we could pull all of that off of the carpets as much as we can anyway. I always have, uh, we have a few vacs around here. I always save the one that's in the worst shape for this job because it's going to pick up all of the hair 
all the stuff has just been laying and uh, festering down on that carpet for who knows how long. Not only does this look so much better already, but I feel comfortable getting in and entering the cabin to start cleaning it. Always working from top to bottom. We're going to start with the headliner and then the plastic. So I'm going to mix up a nice uh, mixture, 10 to 1 ratio of Red Thunder from Malco, and we can get going. I don't know why, but the headliner is often overlooked. If you're sitting in the vehicle, take um, a little bit of a look around and, and see where you are. Is your head closer to the carpet and the floor? Or is it closer to the headliner? So that's going to be the first thing I uh, clean. It's the first thing that uh, you want to remove odors from. You never know if there were smokers. Uh, and it just overall nastiness gets up in that headliner. And I will show you right here what we pulled off of it. Let me bring you in close and you'll see it's nice and clean now, especially the pillar. And guys, always wear protective gear, especially for your hands making contact with the chemicals and the dirt, but also uh, protecting your mouth and nose and lungs with some type of a mask. So let's fire up the steamer. And I also have a couple more microfibers, a nice detailing brush and our mixture. Let's start working on that plastic. I like to team up the steamer with some of these chemicals to help blast and break loose some of the caked in dirt. Uh, so one thing you want to keep in mind, keep that steamer back six inches or more from the surface. It can discolor and damage plastic. Keep that in mind. Yeah, it does look like an 80s rock concert in here, but this is really going to help speed up the process. If you have one, use it. Also, I always use forced air to follow up the area I just worked in to blow out any excess cleaner from the cracks, crevices, especially near any electrical devices or the center console or the infotainment center. The plastics are perfectly clean. Anything that needs to be redyed or repaired will be done so now. Now let's take care of another material that is really overlooked, and that is the material for the seat belts. Besides the headliner, the seat belts are even closer to you. So let's clean that material, pull them all the way out, clamp it so it can't go back in, and let's prep it. What do I use to clean that material? It's going to be the Matrix Tannin or Coffee Stain Remover. Cut 20 to 1. Before we work the cleaner in there, we want to relax the material, the seat belt, a little bit. And we're going to use the steamer for that. The heat and the steam just relaxes that enough where you can work in the cleaner and work out the dirt that has embedded itself within the fibers.
We're always doing something, guys. We're keeping busy. We want to get this done in a timely manner, so while the seat belts are pre-treated and letting the chemicals set in, we can go back to work on our uh, fixing and re-dyeing of any damaged plastics. This is now dry. We can remove the masking tape. The gear shifter looks good. Now we can take care of the steering wheel next. Hit the seatbelt material with the cleaner one more time and we're going to grab my scrubby pad. These pads are used to clean glass and windows. They have the perfect balance of having enough aggression to get uh, a lot of materials clean, including glass and just so happens seatbelts. But it's not overly aggressive where it's going to fray the material in the seatbelt or scuff and scratch glass as well. It's a perfect tool to use, and you're going to see uh, when I pull that pad away, we brought up some nastiness from that seatbelt. Then grab an old microfiber and mop up. Many of you ask what I do with the microfibers that uh, were used in coatings or to work with SiO2 or graphene spray sealants. They get quickly washed and downgraded to B and C towels used for this purpose. One seat belt down, three to go. And while we pre-treat the next belt, we can come back. And the steering wheel is now dyed and repaired and looking good. That's going to take care of part one of this very short series. The second part, we're going to take care of the rugs and the rest of the materials in this vehicle. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.